Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm here at Swiss Next in San Francisco. It's an institute that brings a lot of makers and inventors um, from around the world to demo their interesting uh, technology research. And here, Sylvan and Cecilia, you guys were recently at SIGGRAPH uh, demoing your real virtuality project. And it's set up behind me. Will is actually using it. So can you uh, give us a quick explanation of uh, what this demo is and what you're trying to accomplish with it? Okay, so what you're seeing here is the demo called Real Virtuality. So basically it combines a motion capture system, an optical one, uh, it's a Vicon motion capture system that we have here, with like some um, Oculus uh, DK2, uh, which basically enables the user, a multiple user at the same time, to walk freely in a virtual environment. Because basically the starting point of that project was like the, the, yeah, the impression that we had that most of the VR demo that we tried where you had to be sitting in a chair and like move in a virtual world but you not move and you get uh, motion sickness and things like that was not very satisfying. So yeah, we wanted something, something yeah, a project where people could be able to uh, freely walk in a virtual environment, interact with physical objects and collaborate with other players. So for that, there are two things. There's the environment that needs to be somewhat mapped, and also the inhabitants, the participants. For this demo, you have two people who can interact, and also objects. Uh, just in terms of tracking, you did mention you're using for head tracking, like the Oculus system, with some special tracking attached, uh, just as an HMD. But how, how is the, the body being tracked? How are your arms and legs being tracked to put you in that space? So basically what you have, you can see on the two users just behind, uh, behind us, they have a different rigid body. So this is a kind of plate where you have passive markers. The markers are, well, reflective tape actually. And they are captured by the, the cameras that we have around us. So the idea is that you have one rigid body on each hand and also on each feet. We have also some markers on the backpack and on the headset. So the cameras are tracking the markers and then we use this information, I mean the, the position and orientation of those rigid body in space in order to map the animation on the virtual character. That's what you will actually animate in the virtual world. Mm, so you know, for each rigid marker, you know, four points tracked will let the camera system know exactly the positional tracking. And then with optical, you have very low latency. And then it's, it's a lot in software where you're using something like inverse kinematics to figure out where the elbows are. Because if you know where you know the two hands are in relation to each other, you know human bodies. If you're rotating a hand, typically you're rotating an elbow. Then your avatar in that world, you don't need to actually track the elbow, but you actually get that, and it's convincing enough, right? Mm, and then. And you also have other physical objects that are being tracked, and how does that enhance the experience? Well, basically, yeah, being able to touch while you are in virtual reality physical elements just had like yeah a whole new uh, uh, additional level to like the feeling of immersion and presence and things like that. So yeah, touching something physical really yeah makes you believe much more that you are somewhere else and in the same time makes the interaction with the virtual world more natural. And it's something that is configurable because this is the installation that you're moving from location to location. You obviously, I see painted markers on the floor. You can program the size of your space, um, but also obstacles, real world obstacles, things like uh, you know a bar that you can't move. You can program so it's mm -hmm. in your 3D environment, and that actually works to the advantage because once that's locked in, when I was using it, I could touch that and that enhanced the feeling of presence because I have a, a physical connection to something in the real world. That's, that's truly amazing. Now, the second demo we did was um, a maze. We walked around in a maze and uh, the way you designed this map environment, it was very constrained. Uh, why was that and how are you using that to give the illusion of, of real space inside the virtual environment? Well, the idea of that yeah, constrained space was really to play a bit with your, your emotion and your senses. So there are like traps and holes and places you don't want to walk because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's empty. So you have to yeah, carefully move to, to, to make sure you don't fall into holes and things like that. And yeah, it was yeah, um, trying to make um, an area that, is, that looks big enough in a, there, a relatively small place. 
And, and I think by constraining some of that space, it actually fools the brain into thinking there are parts of the map where I know I can't go, but because you're rendering it, it makes it feel like this room, like you said, is even bigger than it actually is. You can control the environment in order that you, uh, you fit the people in the space, and also that to constrain them to follow a kind of path, I mean, where they have to, to go, actually, in order to, to enjoy the, the maze. So that's uh, that's that's. Uh, it's a convincing illusion of a, of a space, because if you're walking through a maze, for example, uh, I lose track of exactly where I am, as opposed to if the environment was a, is a representation of one room. If it's one room like that Pharaoh example, I know the corners are there and there and there. And, but if it's a maze and I'm turning corners, uh, then I could be confusing myself over time. And, and actually, you can dynamically change that environment as well, right? Yeah, that, that's the idea, is that basically you can make that an endless level. I mean, when you, once you get to a certain point, then you redynamically change the rest of the maze and so on and so on. So, so you could yeah, stay in there like yeah, for, for hours if necessary. I mean. Now, there's some, uh, for that demo, you have to actually play along. Some, some, one of the things you told me, um, you, you know, if I, I can break the illusion by not trying to step over, but mm -hmm. with the tracking, your brain, doesn't, your brain wants to play along. Is that something you found in your research? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one funny aspect was uh, one girl who tried the system uh, at the very first hole in the scene. She she had like a, yeah a scare of height or something like that. So she was completely blocked. Even if she perfectly perfectly knew that the floor was completely even, she could not move. She was completely scared and yeah did not even dare putting one one foot in front of the other. Yeah, there were also uh, uh, girls screaming because they saw the, the spider that are also in the environment. So that's like, well, it's not real, but I mean, that the trick is there. So yeah. that's funny. The effect is really there because you, your brain think like, well, that's real, but it's not actually. Same thing, you don't want to, to walk in the hole. It doesn't even need to be photorealistic no. as long as there is a sense of space um, and your brain is at ease and not trying to break the illusion at every turn, then the, what you're encountering, maybe your reactions are more visceral to those. But, but if you want to push a little bit more the illusion, what would be also nice when you have hole on the floor is that you just had you know, small steps so that at least could be like one centimeter or something for security as well, also because you don't want to have people falling in the hall, of course. But I mean, just to have like a small illusion that, okay, there is like a small step, then I even more, you know, have the feeling of that it's real, but it's not actually, that's, that's really wow. funny. And then this third demo where you're, uh, you've mo-capped performers and put them in the virtual world where you see virtual people one-to-one. -one. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. You can watch it on you know, a dance on a computer monitor, but to see it in person almost yeah. and get up close to it, what are you trying to get accomplished with that? Well, it's basically kind of like ongoing development with a choreographer in Geneva called uh, Gilles Jobin. And basically, yeah, he wanted to experience a bit with VR technology to see, yeah, how far we could push it, what kind of new experiences we, we could have. And yeah, this first demo here is basically giving the spectator the liberty to yeah, choose his point of view, look at, yeah, basically the ballet directly from the inside and not from a seat like 20 meters away or something like that. So that was, yeah, one of the first elements of, of, of that experience. Being part of the experience, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. And being part of experiences yeah. from a museum exhibit to something like a, a game, a maze, or even a performance, being among that is something that you know, you're only going to get with virtual reality. Where, where is this technology? Where is it going to take us? And what are the next steps for your research? So basically, we are already so in like advanced contact with like uh, yeah museums and theme parks around the world uh, that wants to yeah create um, experience uh, with this kind of uh, platform, mm -hmm. and yeah I mean we really believe that there is so much to be done with these kind of technologies. I mean, yeah, it's basically only limited by your imagination. I mean, the number of experience you can envisage w with that is, yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing. And uh, where can people see this? If they want to find out more information, maybe see like, where are you guys going next if they can't visit Swiss Next in San Francisco? Yeah. So Artanim is uh, located in Geneva in Switzerland. So uh, we have uh, our office there. We also have like a website where we put uh, well, pretty much all the news and so on and so on. People can follow us on Twitter as well if they're interested. Um, 
Fantastic. Well, yeah, thank you guys for bringing this demo to San Francisco. It's an amazing experience. Will and I will talk about it on the podcast and soon. But thank you guys. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you guys soon. Oh, this is super cool.